In past videos, we've talked about elimination reactions, which involve the loss of XY from the substrate with simultaneous formation of a pi bond. In the next few videos, we're going to think about the opposite process, the so-called addition of XY across a double bond. These kinds of reactions form products with new single bonds to X and Y. We call the process addition because the elements of XY are added across the double bond in the starting material. Let's begin by discussing the addition of strong acids such as HBr and HCl across the carbon-carbon double bond in alkenes. Let's look first at the reactants for this process, the acid and the alkene. You should remember from our discussion of acid-base chemistry that acids are fond of releasing H plus ions or protons. We can draw a curved arrow to illustrate this process that looks like this. This leaves behind an X minus anion, which, if the acid is very strong, is relatively stable. The most common acids used in addition reactions are hydrobromic acid, HBr, and hydrochloric acid, HCl. Notice that the X minus anions corresponding to these compounds, Br minus and Cl minus, are both relatively stable thanks to the high electronegativity of the halogen atoms. Turning our attention to the alkene, what you should notice is the surplus of electrons in the two atoms that are doubly bound to one another. Where we would have, say, extra hydrogen atoms in a simple alkane, we now have a pair of electrons in a double bond that can act as a nucleophile towards any electrophiles that may happen to be around. Let's draw a resonance structure that really makes this pair of electrons jump out of the screen. Although this may not be the most realistic resonance structure ever drawn, it does show us that a double bond is both a latent nucleophile or electron donor and electrophile or electron acceptor. Interestingly, the same is true of the acid. H plus is a great electrophile and X minus with its surplus of electrons can serve as a nucleophile. Working with the structures at the bottom of this slide, it's very easy to see how we could combine the two sets of charges together to form a neutral product. This is the fundamental idea of additions to alkenes. Let's exploit this ability of the double bond to act as an electron donor and acceptor by treating it with another compound, such as an acid, that has similar behavior. The mechanism of HX addition is a two-step process. In the first step, the acid gives up its proton to the alkene. We draw the electrons of the pi bond attacking the hydrogen, which surrenders the electrons in the HX bond to X. Can you envision what this forms? The resulting intermediates are a carbocation, which came from the alkene, and an X minus anion, which came from the acid. From here, simple nucleophilic attack on the positively charged carbon leads to the addition product. Notice that the elements of HX, here drawn in red and blue, have added across the double bond, which is absent in the product. This mechanism gets us smoothly from reactants to products. However, it doesn't tell us the whole story. Is there another possible product that could form through a very similar mechanism? Yes. What if proton transfer placed the hydrogen atom at the internal position instead of the terminal position? The X group would then end up on the terminal position. As it turns out, the bottom product, the one we drew originally, is strongly favored. Let's take a minute to see why. Because addition to alkenes is a two-step process, the stability of the intermediate is a critical factor in the likelihood of the reaction pathway. In this case, the stability of the intermediate carbocation is the main factor that controls the distribution of products. Let's take a look at the intermediates and see if we can explain why one is more stable than the other. Here they are, and it seems that the more substituted cation, that is, the one with more bonds from the positively charged atom to other carbons, must be more stable than the less substituted one. We'll see why this is in a second, but you should notice now that this idea implies that, as a rule, the X group will end up on the more substituted position in the favored product. This is a general rule known as Markovnikov's rule. The X group ends up bound to the more substituted position. How do we explain the extra stability of the more substituted cation over the less substituted one? We can do so using a molecular orbital concept called hyperconjugation. Substituted cations are attached to carbons, 
which must in turn be attached to hydrogens, carbons, or other atoms. As you can see in the drawing here, these bonds that are two bonds away from the cation can line up perfectly to donate electron density toward the empty 2p atomic orbital of the cation. This donation stabilizes the positive charge, since electrons themselves are negatively charged. And perhaps most importantly, this kind of donation is impossible in unsubstituted cations, which lack enough bonds to exhibit any useful amount of hyperconjugation. In the extremely unstable methyl cation, for instance, there are no bonds capable of engaging in hyperconjugation. All the atoms are in the same plane, perpendicular to the 2p orbital. Lastly, let's consider stereochemistry in the products of addition reactions. After a proton is transferred to the alkene, it's often poised to become chiral after attack by X minus. However, in most cases, even if the product of an addition reaction is chiral, equal amounts of both enantiomers will form. Why? Keep in mind that the cation has sp2 hybridization and is completely flat, as I've drawn here. Thus, the nucleophile can attack above or below the plane of the cation, and it will do both with equal probability. The result is equal amounts of two enantiomers. Let's take a second to draw what these enantiomers look like. To save time, we can indicate the equal mixture of enantiomers by drawing a single wavy bond from the stereocenter instead of wedges and dashes.